All right, so I'm speaking with uh, Pete Seal. We're talking about the brand new album, um, <clears throat> and it's it's hard to believe it has been only a year since Killer Be Killed, and now you've got Skycrest. Yeah, that's hard to believe for me as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I, obviously things went really fast, and um, why exactly? I don't know. Um, I have a theory about that. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. Well, yeah, was, okay. Uh, well, I was going to say, yeah, could, it, could it be that 2020, the way it hit us so hard, uh, kind of left you like without any shows and without anything to do other than to just write and be inspired to come up with some great lyrics? Or Actually, that is what one would think, but it was pretty much the other way around. Really? Um, yeah, actually, it was more that, uh, that the, the previous album, Kill or Get Killed, really had uh, such an impact, obviously, on me that, uh, that it, well, it's sort of like reverbed on on me <laughs> and um, so I got back to songwriting um, last year in summer already so just briefly after finishing up uh, Kill or Get Killed and came up uh, quite immediately with uh, I think three or four songs um, so before autumn 2019 I already had like one third of the album pretty much done um, in a uh, rather rough uh, way of course then during winter, I came up with a couple of uh, other ideas for new songs. Well, and then in January, I wanted to start really songwriting, uh, but then things came different. Um, our bassist was uh, diagnosed with uh, cancer, and that, of course, was very, <laughs> very hard and very tough information for us. And, uh, and yeah, sort of like uh, killed all my plans <laughs> to who, work who was, on a new album. I'm sorry, who was diagnosed uh, with cancer? Our bass player. Oh my God, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, fortunately, I mean, luckily, um, his he had a it, he he only let's uh, like this had a, a lymphoma in the end, which is quite well treatable, and um, by now he has been uh, cured one hundred percent. That's good to hear. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely good to hear. Um, but of course, those were really, really um, tough weeks for all of us uh, in, in January and also all of February. But when that, that this situation uh, turned out to be good, you know, when the diagnosis came that he will be uh, completely um, healed, uh, well, then came Corona, <laughs> and uh, Corona was for me. It, I don't know. It wasn't. I didn't feel very good in the in the very beginning. I mean, by now, of course, you somehow get used to it, and and well adjust to it, you know, but um, those first two months, you know, in uh, all of March and then April, I really didn't feel like sit in the studio and write uplifting our and Savior songs. And so since I didn't want this album to catch any negative vibes, you know, I wanted this album really to be, yeah, uh, as a, as, like an and Savior album always is uplifting and positive. And I didn't want that to change, though I didn't do very much in the studio. And those, even I had all the time in the world, I, I didn't do very much. Well, let's say in May or so, I finally, well, crawled back into the studio because also uh, because I, I felt the desire or again to do something on it. And then uh, things went on pretty fast. I found a good way to come back to songwriting. Um, find a good new approach um, to the material again. And uh, the album was then done and recorded and produced pretty fast. Um, one thing also, because uh, this album was done so fast, is that I want this album to be released in the very same year Then Jan, our bass player, had his uh, diagnos diagnosis and uh, was beating the cancer, you know. And the other second reason was that I wanted this album to come out in this corona year, um, you know, as a, well, I don't know, I just, maybe it just wanted to happen, something positive to happen at the end of the year. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, it almost seems like songs like Soul Eater and Welcome to the New World uh, lyrically were inspired by so much that's been going on in 2020. And then when you say right. Welcome to the Nightmare, Welcome to Dystopia, Welcome to the Brave New World, Welcome to Hell, that sums up 2020 poetically so true, whether it's politically or whether it's because of the virus, or whether because of all the you know natural disasters and the fires and the earthquakes and the flooding and everything like that, and then your bass player being diagnosed, 
you know, with cancer and thank God he's on the mend, you know, it, and, and Iron Savior lyrics are always uplifting. I mean, you even have, you know, Raise the Flag, which is not just a song about heavy metal, but it's a song about being a metal head and people don't understand what that means, but you know what it means and you raise the flag for other people of that. But I also like the way you've kind of stepped out of the science fiction realm and kind of focused on maybe a little bit more like Stephen King. I mean, a, a, musically, Silver Bullet is just awesome. And I was just actually getting ready to rent Graveyard Shift, and I saw you have Silver Bullet. I'm like, <laughs> that's so cool. And, of course, obviously you're a fan of Christopher Lambert and the Highlander series because, you know, you know there can only be one. Obviously shows you love, you know, the Highlander. So it's good to see it's not all sci-fi and all space. So, no, no. You know, I mean, uh, no, I mean, it's... Uh... <sighs> Yeah, I do love sci-fi and I do love space, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, besides that, there's lots of uh, other stuff that uh, also right, is on right. my mind. You know, mm -hmm. it's of course it's real life. I mean, I'm I'm in my mid fifties. Right. I did see quite a bit um, in those past fifty six years, and um, of course there are some issues I may can and may want to talk about. And yeah, and I've seen a lot of great movies also, which are very inspiring for me. And you just named Highlander, of course. I mean, there can only be one. It's yeah, it was mind blowing when I saw it the first time. Yeah, how cool was that? You know? Absolutely, yeah, the first. Two and years. of course, uh, of course, I mean, werewolves and stuff like that. Actually, um, um, like like horror stuff, you know, that was something that I have never done before with our So that, that was yeah, uh, it was exactly. kind of yeah. That, so that was kind of kind of new for me. To write about uh, classic horror, you know, and uh, but I, I like that very much, and I think Silver Bullet is a, yeah, it's I mean of course there are only there are only awesome songs on this album, but I think uh, uh, Silver Bullet has a very special awesome to put it like this. <laughs> well, I think I really like the, the the way the music and the lyrics and the whole uh, you know atmosphere of this song uh, works out just great for me you know and um, I mean, if you if you put it on if you put it on your headphones and listen to the song you really see this werewolf this poor creature and this conflict he's in and, uh, and in the end he gets shot and and you know all this these this this tragedy and 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 yeah that that the werewolf theme has in has to it you know i think um, it comes out in this song very nicely yeah, it does. I agree. It, whether it's a silver bullet or American werewolf in London or any of the werewolf uh, lore, it definitely has that lycanthropy vibe. But the music is so good, too. It's just like with the solos and, and, and the riffing. And you're right. It's almost like, am I listening to Iron Savior? Because a lot of these bands get typecast. It's like, oh, Primal Fear put out a new album or, you know, Hammerfall put out a new album or even if it's just a live album this year. And a lot of these bands are starting to put out people just like, oh, it's the same thing. It sounds the same. And I don't think that's the case with I, I don't think that's the case with Iron Savior at all from the very get go. Um, Skycrest seems to be the only thing that really has any kind of sci fi vibe. Now, inter incidentally, you named the album Skycrest. Um, are you a fan of the Mandalorian because his ship's called the Razor Crest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably I, that, that that came later to me. That uh, of course, yeah, they have, they have, no, actually, you know, it's, it's quite embarrassing to say, but I think that the 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 rich the original idea about Skycrest came from the very very old series. I don't know how old you are. But uh, there was this TV show called um, Falcon Crest. Of course, I remember Falcon Crest. It was yeah, of course, Falcon Crest, you know. And, um, of course, I mean, I, I, that's, that's I don't know, I, I saw this, this this crest, you know, actually from Falcon Crest. Okay. And thought, oh, well, okay, maybe, maybe Sky Crest it sounds... Actually, I had this, I had the, the, the original, or the work title of Sky Crest was um, Silver Crest. Silver Crest, um, okay. But Silvercrest wasn't impacting enough, and uh, then, well, and then uh, sometimes, uh, then, 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 you know, you're just lucky, and this wasn't planned, and um, I was just thinking of, of what, I actually, I don't know, even know, I can't remember what I was thinking of, and sorry, it was just there, uh, yeah, Skycrest, yeah, it sounds cool, yeah, great name for an album, I'll do it. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, just I was born in the late '60s. I just celebrated my birthday uh, yeah, last okay. week, so I grew up with, a, with my, a mother and sister who were big fans of Dallas in the '80s and who shot Jr. And on CBS, yeah. what followed was Falcon Crest, another boring day, an evening soap opera. But I get the yeah. whole idea of a crest 
of an insignia or of something like, you know, a, a exactly, mark. Yeah. So that makes sense. Interesting. I thought it was, you know, because I don't have the lyrics. I kind of thought maybe it was like a, 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 a spaceship or something. And then they, they, you know, they call themselves the Skycrest or civil. Yeah, I mean, you know, of course, it's a little, like it's a little, and, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's a little, uh, it's a little, uh, well, <laughs> let's say poetical, political. <laughs> no, um, it's, uh, it's, well, I mean, it's, it's the Skycrest is an ode to the Iron Savior, you know. It, right, it's, okay. it describes kind of so. what the Iron Savior is all capable of and, and the That's greatness awesome. of the Savior and, and what he does, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, the more that the more the Elon Musk keeps talking about civilization on other planets and we keep finding all this stuff out. Incidentally, in 2020, in, in, in spite of all the tragedy and all the misery and all the chaos, there's been some tremendous scientific breakthroughs, uh, you know, I guess they said there were aliens for a minute. The NASA acknowledged it, then it just disappeared. But I mean, there's been some other amazing things as far as like, you know, maybe there will be possibility, you know, when the meteor hits us in 40 years of, of, of colonizing other planets, or maybe the whole Iron Savior myth is actually really real. We're finding DNA more and more that show that possibly, you know, outer space had, you know, influence. So it's really interesting when science fiction becomes science fact. But I think it's fascinating right. that you are all focused on you know, I mean, you even talk about the orange one kind of when you talk about the clown and welcome to the new world. And I know with what we're going on in America and politically, it's just so apropos. But I also want to talk about the fact that you were in another band called Savage Circus. Um, is that on hiatus or? No, actually, I'm not in that band anymore. I mean, no, I, I quit. No, no, I quit uh, Savage Circus 10 years ago. Oh, um, you did quit, okay. No, well, I, no, I did to, quit. I just want to say your bandmates from that have been extremely active. Have you heard Tom and Stoch's uh, Mentalist yet? No, I haven't heard about that. Actually, I'm not... Um, I, I, <laughs> no, I haven't heard about that. Oh, because um, Jens Carlson has a new Persuader album coming out next week. Yeah, I heard about that, of course, but um, I think the last uh, Persuader album was already six years ago, so... <laughs> Okay. And even your former uh, drummer, Mike Tirana, is in a band from Norway called Guy Epicus, and they have a new album coming out uh, this year as well called Seventh Rising. So it's kind of good that everybody's kind of keeping busy during 2020 doing what, you know, I guess doing what they do. The other thing I thought was fascinating is, obviously, you know, you've covered Judas Priest and you've covered so many great bands. Uh, you covered Nazareth, and we find out it's a Joni Mitchell cover. But, um, you know, it's it, you've covered all these great bands. And I think even if you listen to your lyrics, I find you say, you know, you, you start saying at the end, a silver bullet beyond the realms of death and finding peace of mind. <laughs> and then you also say, back, back hard, ride free. I think it's great that you're just uh, paying, you know, homage to your, you know, the bands that influenced you. Have you read Ralph Halford's Confess yet? No, no, I haven't, I haven't been reading about that. But of course, I mean, it, it, it was for me, it was, of course, it's obvious. I mean, it's it was quite totally clear to me that uh, if you, if that from beyond the realms of death, of course somebody would who is uh, yeah uh, familiar with uh, with that, of course would uh, would yeah just like you say peek on that. Um, so that was kind of like uh, yeah. I mean, I was aware of that, and I put it there because it's uh, it was fitting, and it is a uh, yeah also a homage. I mean, I think. Um, Beyond the Realms of Death is an awesome song, and of course, um, of course Silver Bullet has musical-wise not very much to do with Beyond the Realms of Death. No, but I was, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, in, in the in in the in the well in the within the lyrical concept, it was fitting, and it yeah. was a little link, of course, to my yeah to my to my where I'm coming from, you know. Yeah, no, it's fine. If you, I mean, you, you can quote so many different bands, uh, song titles and lyrics and have them fit to your lyrics, but it just shows you're paying homage. I just received the new Iron Maiden live box set today. And, you know, you said peace of mind as well. And people could say, oh, just peace of mind. But to me, instantly, I think of Eddie and I think of, you know, this, they do revelations and they do <laughs> where he goes there. OK, peace of mind. But that's OK. That's wearing your influences on your sleeve. And I think more and more as Iron Savior evolves, you really aren't even power metal. I mean, I know you started out with, you know, with Kai Hansen and Gamma Ray, and I cannot wait for the new Halloween and what Kai Hansen's doing with them. But, um, but you know, it's, you know, these bands that are being labeled as power metal. I mean, I listened to a band the other day who I'm going to be interviewing soon who put out a Christmas album and it is over the top, great, awesome power metal because they throw the Trans-Siberian Orchestra Christmas music in and all the power metal, you know, the keyboards and everything else. But you guys are becoming more and more just straight metal. I mean, you talk about Judas Priest, even when you covered ACDC last year. Have you heard uh, 
fired up yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 it's a good album. I'm, Isn't it, really though? I mean, it's hard to believe Blue Oyster Cult and ACDC really? might have put out some Absolutely. of the best albums in the last 30 years. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's a it's a really really good one, and um, you know, honestly, at the beginning I was going like, yeah, okay. I mean, I was very happy with the with the with the latest um, outputs. They were okay, but they weren't actually as thrilling, to be honest. Yeah, I found but, myself um, going back and but visiting this one, Rocker yeah, Bus. But this one, yeah, but this but the new one really does rock. I I must admit. And well, coming back to Iron Savior and going more to the classic heavy metal, well. I don't know. I mean, um, it's it's not something that I really do on purpose, you know. It's just the way that I'm just uh, that I just feel like uh, writing more classic based songs, you know, like like Soul Eater or stuff like. Honestly, I think in the end, um, what uh, what is uh, the good thing about Iron Savior is that you can have a song like Silver Bullet. Um, on the same album, on the same album, and exactly, and and by the way, and right next to each other, um, and the other one would be Raise the Flag, and both are working, and both are totally Iron Savior, and I think right. that is, that uh, well, that gives me the possibility to do my songwriting, you know, in a rather wide, wider range, you know, as for example, ACDC. <laughs> Well, I just like I said, we miss Brian Johnson being in that band, and now that he's back, it's, it's just good to see they have just such a tremendous comeback. But um, even when you did a video for Soul Leader, even though it was more a performance video, because uh, I really love the video you did last year when you actually filmed in your car while you were driving and lip sync. That's just so clever. Yeah, of course, that was the, that was the, yeah. I mean, the, the, maybe we will be. I hope that we will be able to do a, a short video, another video like this, you know, because of course and we are on the lockdown. Right, so right. I don't know if it's going to work out, but the, I'm in good hopes that we're going to that we will be able to have another uh, video like this. Yeah, maybe you can do, like, do like Ode to, the, Ode to the Brave, which is, by the way, a great way to close the album, the 60 minutes of solid metal, and then to end with Ode to the Brave. That'd be just a great video. But I actually kind of like the way you slowed things down a bit. I don't want to say ballad, but you definitely slows things down with Ease Your Pain. Um, is that also focusing, you know, on maybe your bass player and what he went through or just... just yes, kind of... exactly. Yeah, yeah, of course. And of course, it does slow down quite a bit. I mean, it's a ballad and I think it's okay, a... It's a ballad. It's a ballad. I mean, it's a ballad. It's a, it's a classic ballad. Okay. I think it can't be any more classic, you know. <laughs> right. um, it has all like um, a, a real metal or, or, or power metal ballad has to have. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, lyric-wise, um, Jan is talking about his uh, his yeah his very own situation, and uh, not only his well his pain. I mean, uh, the, the, the the lyrics are about his uh, yeah how how this affects his uh, relationship, and how hard it was for himself to see his uh, his well his his girlfriend suffer um, from, from from this, you know. And and that for him for him was even harder than his yeah than his own pain you know for about being being sick you know, and um, so for me it was uh, clear from the very first minute on that he would sing his own song, and uh, and even if he if he didn't if he wouldn't have wanted to I would have talked him into it of course. Um, so, but of course I didn't have to do that, and uh, he was a little bit insecure if he would be able to sing this song. Um, I think he just did perfectly great. I think he's uh, the, the performance is, uh, yeah, uh, without <laughs> without any doubts, just pure awesomeness. And um, I I knew that Jan was a good singer, but I, but even myself, I was a, a bit surprised of how good he actually is. And uh, so yeah, I think um, if you're into ballads, um, this one is a really good one. Well, and I and I wanted didn't want to be you know pejorative about the term ballad because a lot of time ballads are you know like you know the hair bands doing the songs to get chicks. But we talked about Beyond the Realms of Death. That is in of itself is a ballad. But what a powerful ballad! What emotional ballad it is, you know. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. I did not know he was actually doing all the vocals. I thought you kind of shared vocals. He does all the vocals on Ease Your Pain. Yes, it's only him. It's uh, it's just him singing. Wow, he does sound a little bit like you. 
And I think once people realize what that song's about, because people might just say, oh, ballads skip and, you know, move on to the next song. Or just, you know, people have been, you know, buying, the, you know, I don't know why one friend's been buying all the singles you put out for, you know, uh, Our Time Has Come and Soul Leader. Uh, you know, he might say, oh, I'll probably just get, you know, these songs and skip that song. But when he realizes what it's about, he might change his mind go, oh, okay, that's a heartfelt, emotional ballad that's a real tearjerker. So I think, yeah. people, you know, a lot of times when people just have the digital, they don't understand or know all that. They just, you know, go with what they that's have. That's right. Well, I mean, there are always there are always those kind of people who say ballads are five minutes of wasted time on any album. You know, <laughs> those for those people you can't do very much. You know, they, they they you can do the best ballad on earth and they still would skip it because it simply it's a ballad. <laughs> right. Well, some but, bands uh, can do ballads very well, and other bands, I don't care how awesome they are as far as power metal. Their ballads are the worst. I've gotten in a little trouble by telling that artist I don't like his ballads. But um, some bands just do ballads very well. But especially when it's an emotional ballad, especially when it has some kind of real, you know, meaning behind it. It's not just to get checks. It, I think it has a lot more pertinence, a lot more value. Um, so even honestly, uh, honestly, for me, that is the main. Uh, that's the the only uh, reason to, to why to do to, to do a ballad. You know, if you really have to say something, then then it's okay to do it as a ballad. But you know, this. Uh, this this just to get chicks thing Home is sweet home thing. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that sucks. <laughs> well, that's not that's not Iron Savior's vibe anyway. No, but, no, but even but even Soul Leader lyrically has a real. Did your did that also be inspired by your bass player? You know about what he's going through? No, no, real, no, 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 no. That's that all is you. More, okay. that's, that's that's more me and myself. You know, as I as I just said, I'm in my mid fifties, and of course. Yeah, I had a couple of I had a couple of years where I really had some stuff I had to deal with, you know, oh, and right. um, of course problems which, uh, yeah, which would kind of like would haunt me and, and sure. keep me awake at night. And I think everybody um, had oh, yeah. situations like this in life where you just simply, yeah, I mean, if, of course, in the end you you can't fall asleep, but you know, you go to bed, you switch off the light, and you close your eyes, and yeah, the the, the, the head keeps spinning around, you know, and. Oh, yeah. um, that's uh, <clears throat> that's what I'm talking um, about in Soul Eater, and of course, <laughs> well, I mean, there is of course no Soul Eater um, in, in existing, you know. But uh, well, Harry it's Potter, metaphor, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah. Harry Potter, <laughs> I think they but, have Soul Eater. But of course, right? I mean, you probably, you, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. But in the end, of course, it's it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Metaphor, of course. Uh, to uh, to don't get yeah, to don't let you drag under, you know, you have to get rid of soul leader, destroy it and face your problems and, and solve them because that's the only way how how they, they go away and you, you find back into a nice sleep at night. I have to admit, before I saw the lyrics, when I first saw the lyric, or when I saw, first saw the video um, and I saw the title Soul Eater, I'm like, wait a minute, Gamma Ray had a song called Space Eater. Now they got a song called Soul Eater, and it didn't really. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and of course, I had I had Space Eater in mind. Um, oh, okay. We did that back <laughs> in the days, of course, in the very first Gamma Ray album. There was, of course, Space Eater on it. Right, right. And of course, the, I gave that I gave that a minute of thought. Okay. Uh, if that would be okay to come up with Soul Eater now, but I said, right. nah, it's long ago, and the songs are not really alike, and um, it's different bands, different people. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. and it's a different, it's it's a different safe vibe to all so. around because you're, you're talking about your soul devouring your thoughts and your mind and everything. It's interesting when I talked to Kai years ago about the song Space Eater. In America, we have a thing called a space heater, which is what my wife is using right now to keep herself warm. And I don't think mm -hmm, it makes I sense know. to Kai. It's probably like space <laughs> eater, space heater. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but luckily, you don't have a soul eater. No, I don't know. I might have a soul eater. <laughs> keep my keep my soul warm until I go to yeah. until I burn in hell. And well, as you as you say, as you say, welcome to hell because it, 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 we we might be heading towards dystopia. Although I don't know, things are looking better. You know, things are starting to show. I mean, I don't know. I don't. America's so divided right now. Who knows what's going to happen? But. We we can yeah. only we can only hope for the best and raise the flag. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I mean, actually, you 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 already mentioned the divide. I think that is your your main problem. And I mean, Trump, of course, wasn't the the, the wasn't the reason. He was just a symptom, you know. I mean, the rip was there before. Oh, yeah. um, the, I think what is really the, the 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 bad thing about the Trump administration and Trump himself is that he used this divide, you know, and and he well and uh, for his own benefits you know yep. and and, the and to make and what of course the her. democrats are are not angels you know that's nope. uh, i mean uh, and uh, i think that also is one of one of your biggest problems um, that you only have to that you have this ridiculous 
<laughs> as a European, for me, it's uh, incredible that you only have two parties to, you know. Uh, it's it's like having the choice between the pestilence and cholera for me sometimes, you know. And, and of course, that, that does, and, you know. So, anyways, I mean, well, we, we I really have a libertarian hope... party, but they just never get even. No, no, I know, I know. They, but they're more or less non-existent, you know. Right, right, I know. They're, they're and I think you also have something like a green party, so that, so you right, do yeah, have other do. parties, but but they are but they are barely always, existing. So it always becomes red and blue states, and you know, yeah, yeah. Democrats or Republicans, and you know, the idealists. Yeah. And, but yeah, as a I Democrat, think I really, I really hope for you, for all of you. I mean, for for the entire American nation that it will be possible to to heal this divide and and to move towards each other again i think that is the biggest problem nationwide that uh, and and i i think with biden uh, at you at least even if you don't like biden at least it would give the whole nation four years of let's say um more yeah. relaxed or some time to rest and and rethink you know I truly believe he wants to unite the American people, despite what Americans and Republicans think. I truly believe he wants to unite the American people. I mean, he's already trying to do everything he can to, to work with, you know, these vaccines and getting people and, you know, office to help. So I, I, I think he's got the right idea, regardless what anybody else says. I, I think he's got the right. I think his heart's in it. So we'll see. <laughs> if not, well, you can write I mean... more lyrics later about what's going on in America. <laughs> Well, I'm really happy that it, 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 I, I have to admit that I am happy that um, that my lyrics um, in uh, Welcome to the New World uh, now remains a utopia or a dystopia, and they didn't become true. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I don't know we want utopia, but we don't want dystopia. We don't want either or. We want something happy in the middle. So, I mean, yeah. even Brave New World is like, you know, I don't think people really read Aldous Huxley, and I don't think they really know what Brave New World's about. But, no. uh, you know, I, I'm all about just raising the flag of metal, you know, and yeah, I know, you know, and like you said, the soul eater, we all have soul eaters, but, you know, hopefully that, you know, it won't devour us and we can find, you know, find peace. And, you know, you do always have positive lyrics and everything you in everything you do. And I think that's great that Iron Savior's attitude is always uplifting and always one of, you know, think good things and. You know, look on the right. Always, Monty Python's always look on the bright side of life. Attitude. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One of my favorite movies, by the way. <laughs> always look on the life bright side. Life of Brian. Yeah, Life of Brian. Yeah, yeah me too. too. <laughs> always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> yeah, and that's what Iron Maiden opens all their sets with anymore, which is great. People don't even realize that's in the background playing. So yeah, good old Eric Idle hanging on the cross. You know, <laughs> life's a piece of shit when you look at it, but always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pete. Well, thanks again for a wonderful uh, interview, another awesome, great album. And I think people will be really interested to find out, you know, what like Ease Your Pain is really about and what's going on with your bass player. And that, you know, you do have, the, you know, a mind outside of sci-fi that you do like other movies, like Stephen King type movies and other type <laughs> fantasy based and action <laughs> type movies. And that, you know, you also watched soap operas, nighttime soap operas in the 80s, like Falcon Crest. Yikes. <laughs> well, it was actually, actually, I did watch it. I did watch it when actually when it was broadcasted. Um, the first time I watched the reruns and they were something oh, like uh, like yeah, late yeah. afternoon, you know. And uh, and in Germany we had a very 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 disappointing TV situation in those times. So, you know, we didn't have all these private stations. We had very little TV stations, and so I mean, whatever was broadcasted, you had to watch it. <laughs> yeah, that show had Fernando Lamas. He was considered the hottest man of the year in 1984. Oh man, times were different. <laughs> okay. Take care. Cheers. Michael, great talking to you. Have a have a great uh, day, or is it uh, is it earlier? I think yeah, it's, yeah, after, it's, it's early afternoon here, seven hours. Yeah, so, yeah. All righty. So have a great day then. Enjoy the rest of the day, and all the best. And uh, yeah, somewhere, sometime soon, hopefully. Take care. Bye. All righty. Bye bye.